A couple of years ago, our family went on one of the best vacations we'd ever been on. Well, it was the only vacation we'd ever been on, but nonetheless, it was incredible. We spent five nights and six days at the beautiful Paradisus in Los Cabos, Mexico. I'm not sure I pronounced that right. Paradisos, whatever. Anyway, it was beautiful. This all-inclusive resort was a true luxury getaway for our busy young family. The kids played all day with us in the family-friendly pool and met new friends in the kids' club. Nicole and I enjoyed exercising in the fitness center in the mornings, laying out in the pool cabanas during the day, and eating at different on-campus restaurants each night. We didn't even care if the kids ate all their food because it was all inclusive. <laughs> For Mother's Day, I even booked a couple's massage and a facial at the spa. It was so relaxing that I fell asleep during the treatment. Uh, just don't tell Nicole about that. <laughs> it was a memorable week and we're so glad we did it together. And the best part of all, the entire trip only cost us $329. Wait, how much? the entire trip only cost us $329. Yep, all of it. The flights, the hotel, the food, the private transportation, and even the spa, man, $329. Our story on how we did this even caught the eye of major media like Business Insider. So you're probably wondering how we did it. Well, let me tell you how we did it. Our Cabo adventure was funded with credit card points and, oh man, a lot of them. <laughs> I learned about this magical world of travel rewards from Brad Barrett, the co-founder of TravelMiles101.com. He opened my eyes to how thousands of financially responsible individuals were using credit cards to earn nearly free global and national travel every day. In short, here's how the process works. Number one, sign up for a credit card with a big travel bonus. These can be with miles or points or any other denomination associated with travel. Number two, put your typical monthly expenses on that credit card. That's the important part, your typical monthly expenses. Number three, hit the minimum spending requirement. For example, some cards require $3,000 of spending on the card in three months. Make sure that type of spending is in line with your typical monthly expenses. Number four, receive the bonus. For example, 50,000 points could equate to roughly $500 of free travel. Number five, rinse and repeat until you have enough for a free vacation. Simple as that. Now, I was skeptical of this process at first because after going credit card free for nearly five years of my adult life, after reading Dave Ramsey's The Total Money Makeover, I wasn't sure this was the best money move for our family. So I decided to take Brad's free course on travel rewards, and I came to understand that this tremendous perk can only really work out if you are extremely diligent and accurately track your spending. If you miss a payment or you overspend just to get the rewards, then the credit card company wins and you lose. And if you start going into credit card debt, then the credit card companies really win. Despite the apparent debt-laden dangers, Nicole and I decided to go for it. <laughs> My wife knew how much of a money nerd I was and trusted that I wouldn't let this thing go off the rails. Okay, so here are the details of how we scored a nearly free, all-inclusive family vacation to Cabo San Lucas. Number one, decide the destination. Our original plan was to go to Disneyland with the kids, but we decided against it. We wanted our first family vacation to be relaxing and fun. An all-inclusive resort in Mexico was more our speed. We looked at Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Acapulco, and Puerto Vallarta, but the best option we found for us was in Cabo San Lucas. Since this was where Nicole and I went for our honeymoon, we were quickly sold on the idea. Number two, calculate the travel costs. Vacations can be expensive. When you add two kids into the picture, it can get very expensive. That's why we were geeked about the possibility of getting this incredible vacation for nearly free. The elements of the trip that we had to cover with points were as follows. Round trip flights from Detroit, where we live, to Cabo San Lucas on Delta for four people, that was 3,475 bucks. An all-inclusive resort for five nights, that was 1,900 bucks. Private transportation from the airport, hotel, and back, 120 bucks. 
Airport parking, 70 bucks. Food and snacks on the travel days, $130. Tips, $115. A couple's spa treatment for a Mother's Day must was $420. The credit card annual fee that we had to pay, 95 bucks. And then random miscellaneous stuff like sunscreen and gifts was 30 bucks for a total of 6,355 bucks. We didn't have 6,355 bucks saved up for this trip, so it was time for us to start earning some points. Our points earning adventure started in July of 2017. This was a full 10 months before our travel date. Number three, sign up for travel rewards credit cards for flights and your hotel. The amount of options out there for credit card rewards is mind-boggling. It makes sense though. With our country in over $1 trillion of credit card debt, it's no wonder there are so many lucrative bonus offers out there. It's working for the credit card companies. Okay, rant over. Let's win this game. First, let's talk about flights. I used to fly Delta a lot for work because they have a hub here in Detroit. It's a very nice airline with excellent service and I really enjoy flying with them. Our goal was to fly our whole family on the same plane in comfort and style. Also, Delta has a really nice viewing screens on the back of the headrest, which Zoe and Calvin really, really loved. <laughs> Both Nicole and I signed up for the Gold Delta Sky Miles credit card and collectively received 135,000 Sky Miles and a $100 statement credit after meeting the minimum spending requirement of $3,000 in three months. This bonus was enough to cover round trip flights for our family of four. Now let's talk about hotel. Chase has an excellent rewards program. Their ultimate rewards portal allows you to get more value from your points as well. For example, if you earn 50,000 points by signing up for their Chase Sapphire Preferred, that would equate to $625 worth of travel when booked inside the ultimate rewards portal. Again, Nicole and I both signed up for this card, giving us 100,000 points or $1,250 of free travel. Ultimately, this wasn't enough to book this nicer Paradisus resort. To get to that level that we needed, Nicole also signed up for the Chase Inc. business card and received an additional 80,000 points. With the large bonus here, Chase requires a $95 annual upfront fee. Unfortunately, that cost was just unavoidable. It's all good though. For $1,000 of free travel, I'll pay $95 all day long. These 180,000 points and the subsequent points we received for our typical spending on the card allowed us to get our five night, all inclusive dream resort for nearly free. Number four, don't forget the smaller travel costs. With the flights and hotel nights now covered, it was time for us to put our focus on the smaller travel costs. There are some credit cards out there that offer miles, and these are essentially a statement credit on your card. So for example, when I bought our $420 spa package from the hotel, this was fully reimbursable because I signed up for the Barclay Arrival Plus card. Unfortunately, this awesome card is no longer taking applications as of June 2019, but there are other cards out there like this. We also use the Capital One Venture Card to pay our airline taxes, our fees, and charges that, there, that occur when you book an international flight. These charges total 275 bucks, but they were all taken care of by the miles earned through the Capital One Venture Card. The Venture Card also took care of our private transportation to and from the airport in Cabo, our airport parking, our snacks on the Delta flight, even our sunscreen that we had to buy at the hotel because we ran out, so we just bought it through the hotel, and that was covered. <laughs> Number five, have your spouse sign up with you. As I mentioned earlier, our key to earning some of the big points bonuses was having both me and Nicole sign up for the cards. This helped us to double our earnings. Instead of 50,000 points worth for 625 bucks with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, we earned 100,000 points worth 1250. Marriage definitely has its perks when it comes to travel rewards. Oh, and the lifelong partnership and the love stuff too. That's pretty important. <laughs> Number six, track your spending. From the very beginning of this journey, Nicole and I promised ourselves that we'd be very diligent about tracking the minimum spending requirements, the fees, and the overall card use. I am positive that our travel rewards plans would have been a disaster if we weren't tracking things closely. Nicole and I use Mint to track our monthly spending. Mint's handy and 
free application has helped us to stay on top of our finances and accomplish some really incredible things like paying off our $200,000 mortgage in less than five years. All of our transactions were easily tracked through Mint and this ensured that we did not overspend or miss a payment. You can find a tutorial for Mint right here. Number seven, sign up for automatic credit card payments. As soon as we got a new card, we immediately signed up for automatic bill payment. This simple and quick action helped us to never miss a payment. And we would pay off the entire balance, not just the minimum payments, each pay period. This is the only way we could do this process. Let me repeat, pay off the credit card bill in full each month or don't do this at all. It's dangerous and it's not worth it. Okay. <laughs> Number eight, allow time for applying for new cards. One major lesson learned was when we were drawing closer to hitting our minimum spending requirement is that we should have applied for our next card immediately. Sometimes the process of applying and receiving our next card would take a few weeks. This was precious points earning time that we were missing out on. <laughs> we started to get better at this as we got closer to earning all of the miles and points we needed to book our collective trip to Cabo. Number nine, track your credit. During this process, surprisingly, my credit score went up. I had signed up for my free credit score and monitoring through Credit Sesame to keep a close watch on my activity. I didn't want things to get out of hand, but for some reason, this activity improved my score. Depending on your credit situation, the amount of debt you have, your payment history, and the variety of debt that you have, your credit score could go up or it could go down with this travel rewards activity. Since we were debt-free when we started this travel rewards journey, I'm assuming our credit went up because we were borrowers once again. FICO, they love borrowers. Number 10, book your trip. When we finally had enough points and miles, it was time to book our trip. As I mentioned, we went with our plan to utilize the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal to the maximum benefit possible, and Delta was our airline of choice. A major part of using travel rewards is that you have to be flexible with your travel dates. Doing this over Christmas break just isn't gonna work for most people. We chose to travel to Cabo in mid-May so we could avoid the spring break crowd and the prices. Conveniently, mid-May allowed us to celebrate Mother's Day, our eighth anniversary, and my son Calvin's fourth birthday. All of our point saving worked. The trip was booked safely, securely, and nearly free. Our only true expenses were as follows. Tips were 125 bucks. The credit card fee was $95 from Chase Inc. The food on the travel days was $109 for a total of $329. After all these steps, you might be asking yourself, was all that travel rewards work worth it? Speaking from someone who's a complete money nerd, yes! <laughs> we received around $6,000 in free travel, and that's tax-free, by the way. Oh yeah, tax-free. That would have required me to earn around $8,000 at my job to pay for this trip. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. In fact, we did it a lot more after this trip. We went to Los Angeles that fall to go to a friend's wedding. Our flights, our hotel at the Beverly Hills W, and our rental car were all covered. The following spring, we planned a vacation to Fort Lauderdale for some more fun in the sun with the kids. The luxury hotel we stayed at, which included charging food and drink to the room, was all covered by points and miles. Okay, okay, so maybe the next question you might be asking would be, can I use travel rewards forever? Because this sounds great, right? Unfortunately not. I'm already getting denied from both Chase and Capital One because I have too many credit cards. They have some rules in place that deters some of this type of activity over a long period of time. Wah wah, right, you know? <laughs> I suppose it was worth it while it lasted. But hey, maybe I'll just go on another credit card dry spell like we did a few years ago, and then we can do it all over again. Honestly, I have no clue. I am a novice with this stuff. All I wanted to do was share our experience and see if this would work for you. But you know who isn't a novice? These guys. Travel Miles 101, check them out. Doctor of Credit, The Points Guy. Check these guys out. 
learn from them. And if you feel like they've helped you, use their credit card rewards pages to support them. That's how they get paid, because it's all free information. The final question you may ask is, should I use travel rewards for nearly free vacations? If all of this seems overwhelming and sounds too difficult, that's good. Don't do it. I repeat, don't do it. The last thing you want to do is get trapped in a pile of credit cards and go into debt. On the other hand, if you're watching this and you're saying, you know what, I'm on top of my finances and I see this as a fun challenge. I would never pass up $6,000 on nearly free travel. Then check out Brad Barrett's free course at the link below. I learned from him and he has a proven system that will help guide you through the right steps. Please don't do this if you know you're irresponsible with money and you're in a lot of debt already. It would be a very bad idea. So in short, think about your situation and you decide what's best for you. Be safe and bon voyage. <laughs> what do you think of getting nearly free travel with credit card rewards? Is it worth it? Is it not? Please let me know in the comments below. This is Andy Hill for Marriage, Kids, and Money, signing off. Carpe diem.